A lot of people want to know if it makes sense to reload your own ammo. And a lot of videos on YouTube I find focus on very expensive setups. So I just wanted to show my budget setup to get people uh, into reloading if they want to start. And the first thing you want to do if you to decide if reloading makes sense is to look at uh, how much you shoot, what caliber you shoot, as well as the cost of equipment, ammo, and components in your area. So first we'll look at components. The four components of a cartridge are on the table. Uh, a casing is for 30-06 is about seven cents. Um, and so this is factory ammo, federal ammo that I bought and shot and reloaded myself. You may also want to buy new casings depending on the caliber. This is 30 carbine uh, casings that I bought. And um, I would stick with buying new or reloading factory ammo to start instead of buying used casings. Next, you'll want to buy primers. And uh, these are really hard to find, but they are about 15 cents each, at least here in Canada. And they go, uh, primers go in the bottom of the casing. Um, I'm going to give all my prices in Canadian just because the prices don't really matter because you'll have to look up what they are in your area. Uh, the next component are the projectiles. These are FMJ 150 grain bullets. So uh, these are 40 cents for me. Um, and it depends what uh, type of bullet you're shooting, whether you're shooting paper or you're shooting um, deer, for example, you'll use different bullets. And lastly, we have powder. So this is a pound of IMR 4064. So a pound of powder has 70, uh, 7,000 grains. And if you're putting 47 grains in each casing, that makes the powder uh, 46 cents per casing, bringing my total to $1.12. Comparing that to uh, factory ammo, this is uh, Federal 150 grain on the table that's loaded. And these rounds for me cost $2.09. So subtracting the dollar and 12 cents, this that it costs to make, the difference is 97 cents comparing factory ammo to reloaded. So this amount will be different for you uh, in your area and also depending on what you're shooting. For me, um, the Federal and Remington Core Locked uh, 30-06 150 grain is pretty much all I can find in my area. Um, some people might be able to find really cheap 30-06, and if that's the case, then you may not even want to reload. The last thing you want to consider is how much time it takes and whether you're the type of person that um, should reload. It takes a lot of uh, concentration and making sure that you're doing everything perfectly. Uh, so you don't hurt yourself. So the first thing that you'll want to buy when you've decided to start reloading is a manual. So a manual is basically your recipe book for cartridges. Um, you could buy this first and just read through it. The beginning of any manual should have information about how to reload, um, how to do things safely, um, and how to inspect casings as well as all the equipment that you'll need. So you can read that to f also uh, see what you'll want to buy. Uh, just remember, uh, each manual is going to promote their own products from that brand. Um, so if you go to, for example, if you go to 30-06 in a manual and say 150 grain jacketed spear point, it's going to give a list of all the powders that you can use. And in this manual, in the Lyman 50th, the IMR 4064 is bolded because that's the recommended powder. So I decided to just go with the recommended powder and I went and found Remington or IMR 4064 and uh, Federal Large Rifle Primers. Um, but the powder and the primers are really hard to find. So if you wanna get started reloading, but you don't have money for the equipment, I would just start looking for powder uh, now and primers right now, because it'll take you a while. Here's another example of um, what a manual shows you it shows you as uh, as well as the powders to use it also shows the dimensions of uh, the casing so that you can measure it and make sure that it's all trimmed to size so you definitely need one and they're about 30 bucks so i'm going to go through the rest of the fixed costs i started with a lee 50th anniversary kit it's a pretty budget option and it comes with most of the things that you'll need to get started i'll also highlight what comes in the kit what 
it doesn't come with and what's not worth using. And my kit was $248. Here are all the pieces of equipment on the table. The first thing that the kit doesn't come with is a way to clean your brass. So I got this tumbler used for $80. Next, I'm gonna go through the brass cleaning process. The kit doesn't come with a brass brush. That's about $2. And then it doesn't come with the case length gauge that you see on the cutter there. That's specifically for 30-06. It does come with the stud cutter, a primer, primer pocket cleaner, and a deburring tool. It doesn't come with a set of calipers. These are a set of cheap calipers. I would spend between $20 and $50, but you don't want to go too cheap on something that needs to be pretty precise. And so next I'll run through the brass cleaning procedure so you can get an understanding of what each part does. The case length, for a 30-06 is 2.494 inches. You use a drill to attach the case to the case holder, and then the case length gauge goes down the length of the cartridge and trims it to length. So this is an option that uh, you can cut your brass for pretty, or you trim your brass for pretty cheap, and the case length gauges are $10. There's another way to trim your brass and that's with the quick trim die and the quick trim cutter. And so you can see here, I'm measuring the brass and it's gonna come in under 2.9, 2.494. So it comes to 2.493. So that's within spec. And next I'll show you the quick trim cutter. So this goes into a quick trim die. Quick trim dies are $20 and they go in the top of the press and that's another way to trim your brass. I have one in the mail, but it's not here yet, so I can't show you. To charge your cases with powder, the kit comes with a powder measure, which allows you to set various volumes of powder so that you can get a consistent amount in each case. I screwed mine to a piece of plywood and it works pretty well. The adjustment is pretty easy to make. Like most things in the kit, the powder measure is pretty cheaply made. It's not the best one on the market, but it will work. I do double check every round on the scale just to be sure, but it's pretty accurate from load to load. The key is to move the arm as smoothly as possible to get the best results. The next thing that you'll need is a scale to dial in the powder and confirm that the cases have the right amount. The one that comes with the 50th anniversary kit is a piece that you'll want to replace right away. Pretty much no one uses it. You'll see in comments that uh, it's everyone agrees that it's terrible. And when I bought my kit, I thought there's no way it can be that bad and I'll just use it. And it was that bad. So I bought this Frankfurt Arsenal scale for $66 and it works really well. Another thing you'll probably want is a powder trickler. This is used to add powder a few grains at a time to bring you to the right weight. I bought mine new for $39, but if I were doing it again, I would try and find a used one. To resize, deprime, and seat a projectile, and then crimp your cases, you'll need to buy a set of dies for your press. I went with the Lee dies because they come with all three dies and a shell holder for $60. The 50th anniversary kit comes with one bushing. Um, and I found a set of two bushings for $10, so $5 each, which gives me a bushing on each of the dies, which is pretty handy, so you can switch them out quicker, but it's not completely necessary. The kit comes with Lee resizing lube. It works fine for me. I've had no issues with it. Uh, the kit doesn't come with a case lube pad. If I were doing this again, I'd probably skip the lube pad. For some reason, they're like $22 for a piece of plastic and some foam. So I don't know that I would buy another one again. The other thing you'll want are just some case holders. These range from about five to $10 and it just lets you hold your cases while you're loading. The Lee 50th anniversary kit comes with a primer on the press while the breech lock kit, which is typically the same price, has a, a handheld primer. If I were doing it again, I'd probably get the version with the handheld primer. I don't know if this is a grass is always greener on the other side kind of thing because I've had people in my comments uh, say that they wish they had have got the press primer instead of the handheld primer. The general advice that I saw before I bought was use a 
press primer for rifle rounds and a hand primer for pistol. Here are the two priming um, arms. You can see one's for large primers and one's for small. I thought I would just show you what it looks like to prime on the press. You lift up the ram and then you press the primer feeder contraption and uh, deposit a primer into the pocket and then you press the ram all the way down and it forces the primer into the bottom of the casing. With some practice you can do it pretty quickly. Um, I might get a, pr a hand primer in the future but uh, I think you'll be fine with whatever option you go for. Honestly, I think I would just pick whatever's the, whatever kit is cheapest. And then I uh, mounted my press to this bench and I put a piece of quarter inch steel in between my press and the bench. That was just a, a piece I found on the side of the road and I sanded it down and painted it. And uh, it made the press a lot more sturdy when I'm, uh, especially when I'm resizing. I also screwed my bench to the floor. You'll also wanna get some ammo boxes. These are five to $10, depending on what size and how many shells they hold. I'm gonna quickly run through the items that I would look for used if you were gonna look for items separately and not go with a kit. Things like ammo boxes or shell holders or a funnel or a powder trickler a manual, anything that's not really precision and it doesn't matter if the previous owner mishandled it um, and it's not gonna be damaged. Those are the things that I would buy used or look for used. Um, things like calipers or a scale, um, anything like that, I would not buy used just because you wanna make sure that it's uh, precise and it hasn't been dropped by the previous owner or mishandled. Another thing I bought used was my brass tumbler. I was able to find a really good deal on it and it came with walnut media. So I was able to save a lot of money there. So the total of my fixed equipment cost was $591. And so that means that I need to reload 609 rounds to break even if I'm saving 97 cents per round. I'll share the spreadsheet that I use in the comments so that you're able to see how I calculated the break even and then you can make a decision based on the calibers and the prices that you're you have in your area on whether it makes sense to reload or not. So hopefully this video gave you all the information that you needed to decide if reloading is right for you and feel free to ask me any questions in the comments and I'll try and respond to everyone. Let me know down in the comments if it makes sense to reload where you are and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this about how to reload and other videos on hunting and anything where I can teach you how to do it yourself. Thanks for watching.